All right, then we have Johann Ficht. And and Ficht here is, is the one who's pictured in this image. His years are 1762 to 1814. And so we have these two major figures that are influential on Hegel's thought. We have Ficht and Schelling. And Ficht and Schelling are uh, German idealists, like Kant is. Idealist meaning that that which is uh, in the realm of ideas is the most real, not just the physical, biological world that we encounter. The most real is the realm of ideas. So this goes all, this has a, a you know, philosophical roots all the way back in Plato, but they do different things with it. So these figures are influential on, on Hegel's thought. Uh, Ficht, essentially in, in Kant's thought, we had this distinction between the noumena and the phenomena. Okay, the noumena being the thing in itself, what, th what objects really are in themselves. And the phenomenal realm is how those objects impact us. In other words, how I encounter the world. So uh, what I experience is, is, you know, what, say, if I have this desk in front of me, I'm experiencing the feel of the desk, the look of the desk, and all of that kind of stuff. But I don't know what the desk is in itself. All I know is how it appears to me in my sense experience. Um, Kant says the objective world or the world of objects really does exist but we have no access to it. So we have no access to the thing in itself, what the world really is in itself. Fink kind of goes the extra step and says, well, the no noumenal doesn't exist at all. So you can just kind of throw that out. We don't really know that an objective world exists. Everything is just phenomena. So the only thing that really exists is things sense, is sense impression. So how things appear to me, how I subjectively receive them. And he would say, this is true even of the individual self. I don't know what I am in myself. In fact, I probably don't even actually exist as one single individual self. That's just a perception of self. We only have a perception of self from the phenomena, what we think and hear and feel and all of those kind of things. But ultimate reality, Ficht would say, he would say he's not getting rid of the notion of a subject or self at all. He's saying, well, there is this absolute ego, this absolute single individual self that underlies all things. And all of us are really experiencing the world through this singular absolute ego or the single singular absolute I. So my individuality doesn't really exist. Your individuality doesn't exist. We're, we're all just understanding things through some um, singular, what we call monistic perspective. Okay, so then we have uh, Friedrich Schelling. Uh, Schelling uh, is really actually the creator of some of the primary categories by which Hegel himself is understood. And I think there's there's been a conflation in some ways of, she of Schelling and Hegel's thought. But um, Schelling follows some of the same lines of thought as, as Fick does. He says there is an absolute identity. So there is an absolute identity between subject and object, meaning he's, he's taking away any distance between subject and object, me and the things I encounter in the world. He's saying that these are not... Uh, these are not fundamentally distinct things. There is an identity between me and the things I encounter. We're all part of the same thing. Uh, he talks about this absolute in a similar way that Fichte does. We have this absolute ego. This absolute has the absolute oneness, the absolute thing that exists, has negation within itself. What I mean by that is it has, it has contradictions in itself, we might say. It has positives and negatives. Think about like the yin-yang kind of idea. And this develops the notion of what we call the dialectic that we find in Hegel.